So my crowdfund is going pretty well, but I have no way to be alerted every time somebody makes a new contribution to my campaign. Ideally, I'd like to get a text message to my phone every time there's a new con contribution added. But in order to do that, I'm going to need to have some sort of asynchronous event fire from my application code every time that contribute function is called. So without going down too big of a black hole here, there are two places where you store data in Ethereum, in chain data and the state tree. Smart contracts can write to both chain data and state, but they can only read from state. So why would you ever have a smart contract write data somewhere where it can't read it from? Well, first and foremost is the pricing. So writing to chain data costs eight gas per byte, whereas writing to state costs 625 gas per byte. Also, when you introduce clients into the mix, clients can read from both chain data and state. So if you want to store data where the client needs to read it, but you don't need it for your internal contract logic, it makes a lot more sense to store it where it's cheaper to write it to. For example, if you have some sort of decentralized Ethereum exchange maybe, and somebody makes a bunch of different deposits, maybe for your user interface, you want to display all the historical deposits that the user made. So you might want to write those to chain data and display them on the client. But for the actual internal logic of the, the contract, you only need the current balance. So maybe that's all that you're storing in state. But more commonly than just cheap data storage, writing to chain data is used to model asynchronous event triggers. So the client can pull constantly against chain data for very specific messages to be written. And then if the contract writes that message to chain data, the client can fire off an asynchronous event. If I want to write an event to chain data from my solidity code, first I need to define a new event. In this case, I'm gonna make an event called new contribution. And I want this event to take two arguments. I want it to take the address of who the contribution is from, and I also want it to take the value of the contribution. Now I can also add this indexed keyword to one or many of the fields in the event, which, which will allow me to attach listeners that listen for specific values of that field. So in my UI, for example, I could make a listener that listens for only specific addresses, giving me a new contribution versus any new contribution. And then when I want to actually write the event, I can just in my code base call it. So in this contribute function at the end of it, I will say I want to also write a new contribution of message.sender comma message.value. Now I'm going to open up my node console and see what this looks like. First, I'm going to sync the latest version of the decipher CLI by doing npm install dash g decipher tv at 0.1.17 because we're on episode 17. And then I'll do decipher dash m test RPC. I'm going to copy the contract over here and I'll save it to a variable called source. And then I'll do decipher.opcodes and then pass in the source. And we'll get a look at the opcodes that are returned from this compiled contract. And if we look over here, we can see that there are these log opcodes that are in the actual you know, binary data of this contract. The log opcodes are what tells the contract to log the data to chain data. So you won't see these log codes unless you have events in your contract. But if you do, then you know that you have events. And then I'm going to deploy the contract by doing var deployed equals decipher.create contract and we can pass in the source and then account one web three dot two way 10 ether 10,000 seconds gas 1 million. And once the contract is deployed, we'll give it a couple contributions by doing deploy.contribute and we'll make this from account one or account two and we'll make the value, let's say one way, because account two is one of my friends and he's being cheap and annoying me. And then maybe account three is a little bit nicer and he donates five way. Okay, so Let's go ahead and let's actually inspect the block headers for these transactions that have been mined. So the first transaction that I made was creating the contract. So if we do web3.f.get block, and that was block one, we can see that we have this attribute in the block header called logs bloom. Now that logs bloom stands for a bloom filter, which is a data structure that you can do more research on on your own if you really want to. But basically this header will let it know if any events have been fired and we can set listeners on this log bloom header to see if an event we care about has been fired and if it has been then to do something in our UI. So in the contract creation, we didn't actually do anything. 
but let's look at a different block, maybe block two, where we actually made the contribution, and we can see that this is not zero. There's actual data being written in here. So if there's data being written into the logs bloom header, then there's, you can actually then look at the transactions and see the data that was written. So I see that this transaction right here was made so we can do web three dot f dot get transaction receipt and then pass in the actual transaction and we'll see that this has this data called logs and in that logs is data so the actual data that we sent out was one way that's the actual value so we can see that value being written here if we looked at a a later block three where we contributed five way we see that again there's an event fire that's why there's data in this logs bloom thing and we can go ahead and get the transaction receipt of the transaction by copying this guy and doing web 3 get transaction receipt pass him in and we'll see that the data of five way is returned and if i wanted to capture that event from javascript i could set a new variable called event equal to deployed dot the event name so in this case new contribution and then I could event.watch, and this is going to take a function as an argument, which takes an error and a result. And I could console.log the result.args, and then whatever argument I wanted to. So in this case, maybe I could do the arg, I could return the value of the contribution. So now I set a watcher, and you can see that this event is getting, this um, RPC call is getting fired constantly that says f get filter changes. And it's going to constantly keep polling the back end for changes. Um, so now if I made a new contribution, let's say account four is going to donate five way. I do donate five way. And now the block is mined and the callback is fired. That gives me five as the event. Now, because I indexed that from field, I can actually in my event description say, I only want to set a watcher for events, maybe from account two. And actually it would be the underscore from because that was the name that I defined in the event listener. Um, and then if I did an event.watch error result, let's console.result args value. So that's I'm attaching a second event listener. But now if I contribute from let's say account four and I contribute 10 ether, I should only see that event logged once because only the first event listener is going to return. But if account two maybe contributed 10 ether, I'll see this log twice because that second listener is only listening for events coming from account two. And in this case, it was the case and both event listeners fired. So now let's actually send a text message every time there's a new contribution. I'm going to do this using the Twilio library. And because I have a package.json file defined at the top level of the con of the um, folder that I'm running this contract from, I can just npm install dash dash save Twilio. And then I can set a var Twilio equals require Twilio. I can instantiate a new REST client by doing var client equals new Twilio.REST client and then passing in my account configuration keys. And anyone can sign up for a free account on Twilio.com. I highly encourage doing it. It's the best service that exists for sending SMSs. Um, and then we can make a new event called var text event. And this will equal deployed.new contribution. We don't care who it's from. And then in we can do text event dot watch and in this callback function, we can say that we want to client.messages.create and we'll make the body of this message new contribution. And we can say results.args.from and maybe a colon and then result.args.value. Um, and then we want to send this to my personal phone number. And this will be from one of my Twilio phone numbers. So you can buy phone numbers on Twilio for a dollar. Um, I have way too many of them for various reasons, only some of them nefarious. And this takes a callback, which we're not going to do anything with. And that should be good. So now we are watching for new contributions. We're actually going to send a text message when we do it. So we will do deployed.contribute. And this will be from account three and the value will be 1000 way. And we'll see that I actually did, if you can see this, a new contribution from Twilio that says we did get that message. And we can throw this up on a node server and there we go, we have an event listener sending text messages from our smart contract.